folks, I'm Jack Fawcett, and welcome to this demo, review, and tone tips video for the new Fender Champion 50XL. Now this is a very affordable, solid state amplifier that has a combination of effects, it has a great clean channel, it has a modeling channel which gives you a bunch of different amplifier sounds that you can use. I found that this amp sounds a lot better than its price, and one of the things that I did uh, besides, you know, playing with it, testing on all the different sounds and putting it through its paces, I also used it live this past weekend when I was performing. And I initially took it out, you know, just kind of to try it out. To, you know, I, I, I took a tube amp with me, I, I Fender Supersonic, which is one of my gigging amps. And I took this one out, I actually took it out more as a backup, and I thought, well, I'll plug it in for a set, or maybe even just a couple of songs if it's not kind of, you know, living up to the integrity of the sound that I want. And... I found, I plugged it in for the whole set. It sounded great. And I used mostly the clean channel. I did use the overdriven channel a little bit. I, I should say the modeler channel, uh, because that does have some cleans on it as well. I used mostly the clean channel. And uh, let me give you kind of an overview of what this amp is like. Now, the next probably, I don't know if you'd say level up, but a, a, a level kind of higher, you know, for this type of amp would be the Super Champ series, like the Fender Super Champ X2, which is the current one. I have a lot of experience with those. I've been using the Super Champ XDs and X2s for years. The control layout is just the same. So you have your first channel, uh, which is just your volume, and then you have your EQ, treble, and bass, and then you also have access to the effects. Now, that is based off of a Fender Blackface sound, which is, a uh, you know, one of the most beautiful clean tones you can possibly imagine. I found that it does it really well. I think it, it captures the responsiveness and, uh, you know, more of the depth of tone of a tube amp than you would expect from a solid state amp. That was kind of my response to it. Now, with tube amps, you know, one of the great things about tube amps is that the, there's this great depth of tone. It almost has a 3D quality to it. It almost feels like you can kind of dive right into the tone. That's kind of how deep they can feel, particularly when you're talking about like a Fender Blackface, like a Twin Reverb, a Super Reverb, a Deluxe Reverb, you know, those types of amps. Now, the only problem is that some of those nuances can get lost in live or in a mix and recording, you know, if there's a lot of instruments around. And you can get some frequency spikes, particularly some sharp treble, some sharp treble, particularly some sharp treble, depending on how you have it set up. And also some kind of swells in the lower mid-range, which can really muddy things up. Now, solid state amps tend to be, let's say, more superficial in tone. It's a little flatter. It doesn't quite have that depth. This one had more depth than I had expect, but it still had some of the charm of the solid state, more even response. So I actually found it was kind of a, a nice combination of both worlds in that regard. So let's talk about now, we'll talk about channel two and then we'll talk about the effects. So channel two is going to give you a combination of voices which are all based on classic amplifiers and then some that are classic amplifiers plus pedals. So that's kind of cool, more in the stop box, more in the stomp box realm than like modulation type effects. Now, they're all listed on here, written right there on the voices, but I'm actually gonna give you the more detailed description from the manual, which came in the box. I'll add a clip of the unboxing in a little bit, but for now I'm just gonna read you the manual what the voices are. Voice one is based on a 65 twin reverb. That's your first Fender clean sound. Voice two is based on a 65 deluxe reverb, which, so the difference there, the, the twin reverb is an 85 watt, 212. It's one of the greatest clean amps of all time. The deluxe is a little bit smaller and it's 22 watts and it's 112, so that's probably gonna give you a little bit more gain. It'll sound slightly smaller, but also in a punchier way. First one, Twin Reverb, is gonna sound really kind of deep and open. The third one, that's where your first stomp box come in, for third voice is Fender Clean plus Compressor. So that's based on a 65 Twin plus a Compressor. Now, think Mark Knopfler, great kind of compressed, clean Fender tone. Also, a lot of country players are gonna use compressors some David Gilmore type stuff, you know, he was very famous for using a compressor, even though he would have traditionally used more British style amps, but the one he played clean, you could probably get some, you know, some very convincing Gilmore tones out of that as well. Then you're going to get into Crunch. Now the Crunch, first one is based on Tweed Basement, which is one of my favorite amps of all time. It's an amp that I've used in many of my videos, many of you have seen me use. In fact, the early Marshalls were based off of Tweed Basements. Just an awesome amp, kind of bluesier, a little warmer and darker than the twin reverb sound. Crunch 2 is a 65 Princeton. That's again gonna be a smaller, punchier sound. And then the next one is Fender Clean Plus Overdrive. That's based on a 65 Deluxe Plus and Overdrive. Now that'll be great 
for kind of singing blues and then even getting into classic rock territory. The next three are based on British amps. So number seven is Brit Clean, 60s British. That's going to be jangly British Invasion. Number eight is Brit Crunch, 80s British. So that's going to be kind of like a brown sound. Number nine would be Brit Plus Distortion. And it says 70s British. So that one I would picture as like a plexi with a rat in front of it. So those are going to give you some you know, great classic rock and into 80s rock tones. Then your last three, 10 through 12, are going to be your high gain tones. Now, I can't imagine many people are watching my channel for high gain metal playing. However, I am going to give everything a fair shake and I'll... Number 10 is high gain 1, 90s American. 11 is high gain 2, metal 2000. 12 is high gain plus octaver for a 90s metal sound. And an octaver is going to give you an octave effect and that's going to sound really, really big and... and snarling and, and kind of nasty. Now we will talk about the effects. So again, some of those have like amp plus effects that you can access. These are going to be more modulation type effects. Now you have your FX selects and then you have your FX level. There's also a tap tempo and the tap tempo works with some but not others. So for instance, tap tempo works with delay but obviously wouldn't work with reverb. That wouldn't really make any sense. Works with delay, tremolo, and some of the other ones. So for effects, you have reverb plus chorus, reverb hall, reverb spring, Chorus, fast sweep, chorus, deep sweep, flanger, delay slap back, that's like an old, old rock and roll type sound, you know, think Scotty Moore and, and um, Brian Setzer uses a slap back type sound. Number nine would be a longer delay, that's again one that's going to work with a tap tempo so you can get some cool different delay tones. Number ten is delay plus reverb, very great for some ambience. 11 is a touch wah, kind of, it's kind of like an auto wah, so the wah responds to how hard you play. That's really great for some kind of funkadelic 70s type sounds. 12 and 13 are vibrato and tremolo. Now vibrato is a pitch shifty one, tremolo is a volume pulse, so that's the difference there. Now the effects work with both channels, so you know, channel 1 and then your voice modeler channel, you can have the effects on either. I think the effects sound really good. One thing that I noticed was that the, uh, the reverbs are more like an amp type reverb, so they don't get crazy washed out. You know, they get certainly high enough that you really, really notice it, but they don't like, you're, you're not going to get into really, really wild territory. Some of them, the delay gets a lot heavier than the reverb does, and the tremolo can really get, you know, kind of you know, pulsing and all. I particularly like the delay plus reverb. I don't use a ton of modulation effects. The chorus kind of added some nice movement to the tone. It added sort of a waviness, which also choruses tend to sort of thicken up your tone a little bit too, so that can be really nice depending on the guitar that you're using. I think my favorite sounds were some of the basic reverb, and then I really liked the slap back, and then the, um, the reverb plus delay I liked quite a bit. Of course, the tremolo sounded great as well. Most of the effects I generally kind of found sounded best you know, you could really hear them presently as you were kind of getting up towards noon. And then I liked them all the way up to about 3 o'clock again where you could really get a nice present effect but without totally overwhelming your tone. As far as the EQ goes, this is something that I wanted to talk about. Okay, so a 50-watt solid-state amp is not going to be as loud as a 50-watt tube amp. It's going to be quieter and a little bit smaller. Now, this is still, again, I, I used it live and it was unmiked and it, it, you know, it kept up and everything and it sounded great. In order to make it sound a little bit bigger, I kind of liked pushing the bass a little bit and backing off the treble a little bit, which rolled off some of the upper edginess and then made it just fill up a little bit more. So if you're looking at them, I had the bass kind of like this and then the treble kind of like this. That's that's how I found, particularly with Fender guitars, that's where I found I like the tone the best. Of course, it might be different with a humbucking guitar. I mean, this one does have a humbucker in the bridge position, but you know, if you're using a dual humbucker guitar, you may want to you know adjust that as necessary. For channel two, the modeler channel, any of the ones that had gain, I really found that the sweet spot of the gain was kind of anywhere from like 1 o'clock to about 3 o'clock. The heavier ones sounded good with the gain pushed up. I thought the overdriven ones sounded best, oh, probably 2 to 3 o'clock. I really liked where it sat there, where the saturation of the gain didn't overwhelm the tone, but you really kind of, you know, could dig in and get the responsiveness, but if you played and backed off a little bit, it, it cleaned up slightly. That was really where I felt that this amp shined in that realm. And of course, Channel 1, I was really impressed with. I thought Channel 1, the clean tone, gave you, you know, really more than I would expect from any sort of solid state amp at this price range, or, you know, really any price range. I mean, I thought it sounded like a really, really nice 
clean tone on the first channel. I'm using two different guitars for this demo. Of course, using this one, this is a, a Fender Stratocaster. It's got some noiseless pickups and a humbucker in it. And also using a Fender Telecaster. I'm gonna use the Fender Telecaster. You heard it on the clean channel, and then I'm gonna use that one to go through all the effects with you. And I'm gonna use this guitar to go through all the amp models for you so that you can really hear all the different features of this amp. Now, it also does have an auxiliary in so that you could plug in an iPhone. I was gonna say iPod, but that's dated now. And it also has a headphone jack so that you can plug in and play after hours, which is great, you know, whether you're in a dorm room, whether you're in an apartment, or, you know, even if you're just at home, whatever age, and you just don't want to bother other people and you're playing late. So that's great. You can plug headphones in. Those are both one eighth jacks, too, so you don't need any adapters. And again, there is an optional foot switch. Now, I'll share with you the unpacking footage so that you can see what it was like coming in the box and everything. It came packed very well. I should mention, I got this directly from Fender. This did not come from a third party. So, of course, third parties could be different depending on how you... But this, this came directly from Fender. It was packaged very well. It came with the amplifier, uh, nice padded. You know, it seemed very, very safe in the box. It came with its power cord, and it came with its manual. So if you want the foot switch, you'd have to get the foot switch separately. I believe that a number of different foot switches would also work with it. Foot switches aren't exactly one size fits all, but they can be interchangeable as long as you get one that has kind of the right number of switches and features and all. It has a Celestion Midnight 60 speaker in it. Now, a lot of times with lower level, and when I say that, I'm talking about kind of price and consumer level again. I think this is a way better amp than the price would suggest. A lot of times with a, a lower level amplifier, you're not going to get a great speaker. And of course, you know, one of the reasons is, well, it's like certainly you wouldn't expect an Alnico speaker in it. I mean, it, the speaker would cost as much as the amp, right? So in order to get an amplifier to you at a decent price, you can't always get premium features on it. So you're not going to get the nicest speaker. That being said, I thought this speaker fit the amp really well. In fact, when I first plugged in my, you know, usually with amps kind of this level, my thought is, okay, this is going to be, a, you know, probably a solid amp, could probably use a speaker upgrade. And I think one of the nice things about this, the Midnight 60, which is a speaker that I don't have any experience with other than this amplifier, but I felt like it fit the tone of the amp well. It responded to what the amp was giving me. So I think the speaker is great. This is also really nice about it. It is super light. It's so light. And, you know, comparatively to lugging around big 212 tube amps and things, I know drummers are laughing at me right now, but whatever. It was just, it's just so, it's so easy to bring to a gig and everything. And I think, you know, or, or to a jam or to a practice or, or whatever. And I think that's a, you know, the, the more you can kind of grab and go, the better it is. Now, I think one of the other things that's great, kind of a singing uh, praise of this amp, and I'm not being paid to say that I like it, not that I'm necessarily above that, but everybody on the internet is now like, you have to have integrity. I think that, you know, particularly if you're a beginner or intermediate level, or even a more advanced player, the better gear you have around the more you're inspired to play, right? So whether you're using this as your main amplifier or a practice amplifier, if you have something that's giving you great tone that makes you want to play, that's a good thing. You know, having something that gives you lousy tone can be depressing, so. Thanks for tuning in. Check out the Fender Champion 50 XL. I'm Jack Fawcett. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Stick around for some more tones coming up soon, and we'll see you next time.
Thank <laughs> you.